So now we're going to talk about getting involved in new construction. New construction is a totally different avenue to have income in real estate industry. So when you work for a builder, you tend to put your license with the builder and you will abide and apply whatever rules and regulations that that builder wants when you're selling their property. With that said, you still have the ethics of real estate that you have to adhere to because first and foremost, you are a licensed real estate agent. So sometimes you will know things about the property um, that you have to literally make a decision. Am I going to disclose this information? Example, you know, maybe possibly that they brought in a lot of dirt to get the property buildable. Is that something that you would disclose? In my case, I would probably say to the people, they brought in a bunch of field dirt. The property is now buildable. You don't have to worry about it now. But yes, there was a time when that property was not buildable. A lot of people do not like for you to disclose that things, but I feel that I'm accountable to someone bigger than my builder or my broker or even to myself. And when I put my head on my pillow at night, I want to know that I did right by my buyers, that I did right by my sellers, and that I was authentically me. Um, but that's a personal choice. And that's something that you'll have to decide if you fit into that. When you're working for a builder, you are completely isolated in sales to the builder. Now, some builders allow you to cross sell, meaning you can go from community to community and you can sell that builder's product in other communities. Some builders will only allow you to sell in the community that you're in. And when I say community, I mean the area that they have you selling in. Example, if there's parcels of land called A, B, and C, and A, B, and C has names, then you're assigned to parcel A. That's the only place you can sell if you work for a builder that does that. If you work for a builder that sells anywhere within their company, then you could sell parcel A, B, and C. Those rules and regulations are set up by the actual builder. What is the benefit of working for a builder? Is you don't have to go out and solicit business. Generally, the marketing of the business is done through the marketing department of that builder. However, you do now have to build relationships with other real estate agents by going to their offices, taking breakfast, taking lunch, saying, hey, I'm Vitina, my community is parcel A, and I really want you to bring all your buyers to me. Um, what is the disadvantage is you're isolated with the fact that sometimes the builders don't want you to make more money than $60,000 a year. And can they actually slow down your sales? They can. I've lived that. Can you get in a community that you have to build up from scratch? Because maybe the other 25 agents before you was not able to sell in that community? Yes. And when you build it up from scratch and you take it up, to the top? Do they tend to move you to another community to start another community? Yes, they do. I've lived that as well. So sometimes in building aspect, you can be your own success horror story. So you can be the person that's making all the sales and bringing in the income for the builder, but you're also the person that has to close out their communities, start new communities, you have to kind of be pliable based upon what it is that they need. The positive thing about it is you have pretty much structured income. I mean, they build 10 houses. You know you have 10 houses to sell. Um, you know you're going to close in those houses most of the time within 60 days. And that's something that sometimes you don't have in general real estate. 
you pretty much know that you only can send them to one lender because the builders tend to pick their own lending groups. And when you send them to this one lender, you pretty much know upfront if that person is qualified or not qualified before you spend a bunch of time with a person. I am a personable person, so I like to ask, what is the reason why you're out looking for property today? Why is it that you haven't bought a property in the last four years? So you're going to come up with your questionnaire that you need to be the same each and every time that you talk to a person so that nobody can say you asked them a question that you didn't ask somebody else. I tend to have the questions that I ask regardless of who it is. And um, I know what answers I'm looking for in those questions as to whether or not this person is going to be a buyer. Heads up. The most aggressive person that walks into your model may not be the person that's buying a house from you. I've learned doing this for some time that the person that's the most aggressive wanting my time, calling me 25 times in a day, texting me 30 times in a day, um, have no boundaries as to when's an appropriate time to call or not to call, that buyer is usually not going to be a buyer. They just need a friend. And sometimes you're gonna meet buyers that just need friends and you can be their friend if you want to. But my suggestion is, and something that I always say, is I'm not here to be your friend, I'm here to sell you real estate. 